Yeah, that was that was totally me and not a clip of Obi Wan saying hello there because I tried it like eight times and didn't sound as cool as he did. But anyway, uh hey, uh welcome to the uh episode six of the interesting podcast with Jedi Brian. Um this episode it's Ken Hampton of uh Hampton's handcrafted lightsabers. Now this guy builds lightsabers. Let that sink in. Because that's really, really cool. Now I am not exaggerating when I say that uh each lightsaber this guy makes is a piece of art. I mean he, he hand tools everything. He does um custom leather work, he's done sculpting, he's done uh a ton of LED work and like anything you can think of this guy can create it. They're phenomenal. But um me and Ken hit it off uh pretty well. We recorded this uh at the same place uh Mauslers was recorded, which is in the hotel lobby back at Tampa Bay Comic Con. But he went right after Sarah, so we didn't start recording this, I want to say, until about 1 a.m., and then we got done around 2, I believe, maybe 1 a.m. to 2 or 1.30 to 2.30. Either way, we were very sleep-deprived and uh, laughing to ourselves, and uh, Ken is an awesome dude. Um, His business practices show a lot of integrity, Um, just him as a person, and I don't know about you guys, but I like to support good people. Um, and the fact that this good good person is incredibly good at what he does. Um, so I can't recommend him enough. Um, I got one. Uh, I ordered my uh, my very own personal lightsaber. And I'm, uh, I'm very excited about it. There's a bit of a wait, but I'm sure it'll be worth, uh, it'll be worth it in the end. So um, here is the interesting podcast number six with Sabersmith Ken Hampton. And uh, enjoy. How you like the silky smooth voice? Oh, I love it. It reminds me of NGR, which puts me to sleep. Well, we won't go that route then. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Ken Hampton. How's it going? Oh, it's going. Oh, I'm looking at your lightsaber. It's just going very well. Oh my God, it's so cool. Hampton's handcrafted lightsaber. Yeah. That is a fun thing to say. That is a fun thing to say. <laughs> um, you know. When you start a business without any thought that it's actually going to turn into anything, you can name it whatever the hell you want. Of course. Of course. Yeah, like, got to put the name in it. Yeah. I have to tell them what I do. Exactly. As well as what I'm making. Well, yeah. That's when all three I, points. When I started selling sabers, nobody knew who the hell I was. So, you know, right. you, you got to have it all right there on the, on, you're right there in the face, the front page. How did you start? Did you know anything about sabers beforehand? He was like, oh, oh my I Dude, I was a complete novice. I yeah? had no flipping clue. You know, I I grew up, you know, I, I'm i an old bastard. I saw Star Wars, the original, before it was even called Episode 4, Just in the Star movie Wars. theater in 1977. I envy um, So Well, don't envy me too much right. because, you know, now I'm a grandfather and, it, uh, you know. Hey, that's cool. You're no, right. that is cool. That is very cool. <laughs> but, uh, no, I've been a fan my entire life. Amazing. And... You know, from the first time a kid sees a lightsaber, they want a lightsaber. Absolutely. Um, I'm just the type of person that I was never satisfied with the little plastic extendable sabers you. and all that. And I knew that there were there was more out there. And about two and a half years ago, I was a, a random ad just kind of popped up on my Facebook, and it was for lightsabers. And I'm like, whoa, that's kind of cool. I haven't seen something like that before. Sure. And so I went to the site and I was like, dude, I, I didn't know that they sold, you know, I'd seen the 
like the Hasbro Sabres, the, yeah, the you FX, know, FX yeah. and all that, you know, you go to the bookstore and, hey, that's pretty cool. And <laughs> one, smack, with it. <laughs> one smack of the blade and it's going to shatter. But, you know, right. it looks pretty neat. You get a weird blank spot. Right. <laughs> but um, I really wanted one. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, I was looking around, I was like, man, you know, it's, it's kind of pricey, but it's not, yeah, yeah. it's not out of the question or anything. Right. So I started talking to the wife and, you, you know, <laughs> I, I suck at subtlety. <laughs> I really do. Of course. And I'm like, hey, you know, instead of getting a bunch of different things for all these different events that we have throughout the year, birthdays, Christmas, whatever, yeah. uh, you know, we could just do like a big thing for each other that kind of covers everything. <laughs> and of course, her immediate, re immediate response was, well, what do you want? Right, of course, they know. And so I showed her and, you know, she was really cool with it at first, but she knows me and she knew what I would like. And so she right. started adding up all the upgrades. And once it topped a thousand dollars, she was like, we're not spending a thousand dollars for something that right that doesn't doesn't serve a real revenue. purpose yeah <laughs> yeah you know? exactly so i was like okay i i can you know i, I, I get I understand. it i yeah, get yeah. it we have a kid you know yeah, we, we, priorities <laughs> we we have bills yeah you know so i thought well you know certainly there's some way to kind of throw something together and i started just kind of looking online and you know i saw like the sink tube savers and different stuff like right. that and i was like I think I can do this. Yeah. And, you know, I was heavily inspired. I, I stumbled across Sloth Furnace, if you've oh, ever seen his work. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just phenomenal. I mean, my absolute hero as far as Saber Smiths go. That's Dude, so is cool. just, he just rocks. I mean, everything he does is just magic. And so I, I was heavily inspired by him. I really didn't know much about the actual Saber building community. Hadn't found the custom saber shop yet, had, you know. Right. So basically, I'm I'm flying blind building my first saber, and and it was a train wreck <laughs> to a degree, you know, by my standards anyway. Right. Like the hilt is huge. The I, I couldn't get sound to work, so I kind of, you know, right. Kind of forgot about the sound. So okay, yeah. well, it'll light up anyway. Sure. I some of the things that I did that did help me was that I made a crystal chamber for the saber. Your first one? My very first one. I did make a crystal chamber and I wanted to make sure, you know, because I the only crystal chambers I'd seen at that point were slot furnace. Right. And all of his, you know, you have to open the hilt to see the crystal. Right. Well, I wanted, you know, if I'm going to put that much work into a crystal chamber, You'll I want to be able it. to see it. Absolutely. So I thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll cut some windows in the hilt so you can see the crystal through there. It'd be kind of, kind of a cool... Yeah, cool thing. yeah, looks awesome. And then the other thing Sloth Furnace did that really inspired me was the LED string blade. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, because they look just brighter than any of the other things that I've found. I understood the, the others were basically flashlights that shine a light up a tube. Right. And, right. you know, they look fine, but, you know, especially back then, when you, by oh, the time right. you get to the tip of the blade, it's you got nothing. Super dim, yeah. Got nothing. So, he... He has some great tutorials. I saw some other things online and figured out, you know, okay, well, I can probably do this. So I ordered the supplies. It took me a couple months to build this thing. And as I as I was building it, I was posting pictures on my just my personal Facebook page. And, right. you know, I had friends and family are like, um, you might want to consider maybe, you know, seeing if somebody would want to buy those. Right. And I... And, Nowhere in my mind it was I think in business, you know. Oh, right. It was like, yeah, yeah. okay, well, I'm enjoying doing this. Which is great. If I keep building sabers and keep buying supplies to build sabers and have a bunch of sabers sitting around the house, my wife's going to kick my ass. <laughs> right. <laughs> so if somebody else wants me to build a saber for them and they want to kind of fund the project, win-win. Uh -huh. Right. So I started the Facebook page, um, started some promotions, things like that. Cool. And, yeah. you know, I kind of started at the same time that I started building my older daughter's lightsaber, cool. which I was able to get the sound to work on. It was a smaller hilt. It still had the crystal chamber, nice. you know, and it was it was a much more successful build than as far as I was concerned. The prototype. And yeah. uh, I was going to wait until May 1st of 2013 okay. to take my first commission. 
and people were just had already um, were on my page were already starting to chomp at the bit wanting to want me to build a saber. Right. So I actually took my first commission in mid April of 2013, and I haven't been without a commission since. Wow. And the page has grown, you know, from there to now I'm, you know, approaching 29,000 fans oh, on the page. That's amazing. Uh, my YouTube channel's starting to take off a little bit. Would really like it to take off more. Sure. Um, so you know, hey, are, are you listening to this? <laughs> HHCLS on YouTube. Yeah. Subscribe. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's been a blast. I, I had a successful Kickstarter campaign that allowed me to get some additional machines so I could tool things a little bit better. Cool. So when I started out, I was working with a drill press and a Dremel. That was oh, it. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Files, hand tools, you know. Right. All that craziness. So the Kickstarter helped a lot. I was able to get a lathe, milling awesome. machine, 3D printer, vinyl plotter, right. you know, a lot of stuff that have been very integral to my business. So. Sure. Hydro spanner. <laughs> yes. I, I keep it in a drawer. It hasn't, I haven't had to use it yet. <laughs> but as soon as one of these things has a problem, I know it's there. there. You go. So. Good man. But no, that's, that's the whole story, man. You know, it, it started off as a fluke, it was never meant to really turn into a full-fledged business. But uh, now I'm, you know, we're ready to kick it into high gear. Um, you know, Sarah really downplays her role quite a bit when, when she talks about uh, her part in the company. But yeah, really, she's she's my right hand right now, and she's going to continue to be so. She's going to move out to California. We're going to get this thing kicked up to the next level, and uh, start making sabers more available in a faster period of time for those that want just you know kind of a standard saber i'm still going to do the custom builds sure. i love to take somebody else's imagination and make it a reality for them so i'm going to continue to do that but we are I, we are going to have sabers ready to sell for customers and we're really excited about that but i can't so cool. do that without her right well, she's how i found out about you oh that's awesome thanks sarah yeah <laughs> she's how we found each other <laughs> that's insane so does everyone in your family have a lightsaber everyone in my family does have a lightsaber as a matter of fact uh, the cross guard saber prodigal is my oldest son's nice. um, he's 23 years old he lives nice. in Virginia he's married has a stepkid and a lightsaber <laughs> and a lightsaber well he doesn't have it right now because I've been borrowing it from my <laughs> Kylo Ren cosplay we so have it. <laughs> I, I will be sending it back to him though my other daughter, Allie, she has her own lightsaber. Hers was the second saber that I ever built. Sweet. Then my younger daughter, my four-year-old, Lexi, she has uh, just like a tiny little youngling initiate, youngling-type saber. Just, ah, you know, amazing. it's got the tiny tiny hilt, tiny blade, but all the same electronics. So you turn the thing on, it's the loudest saber I've ever built. <laughs> okay, it's crazy. In relation to the size, that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> and so you have this tiny saber that's louder than any of these. It's crazy, but she loves it. She. Uh, Lexi's become a huge Star Wars fan. Of course, my uh, my yeah, wife has a couple of sabers that I've made for her for different cosplays. Uh, she does she does a lot of costuming. She has a business where she makes costumes, so she makes several different cosplays oh, for cool. herself. Cool. And so I build sabers for her to to kind of coordinate with what she's putting together. And then my uh, granddaughter, Kaya, I actually took one of the M and M candy dispenser lightsabers. And I rewired it with an LED string blade and a sound card. What? So yeah, when you fire this thing up, it's super loud and it's super bright and it's just you it just blows your M &M mind. Dispenser. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's amazing. Yeah, it, it's it's phenomenal. What? Yep. That's so cool. Man. I'm just thinking about the M&M one. It's so funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're going to have to go to the YouTube channel. I've got a video of it. it oh, it's just, sweet. It's crazy. That's so Yeah, cool. the, first time, the first time you see it fired up, <laughs> your jaw's going to drop. So what is your... I've held your lightsaber, so they know yes. the answer to this. Green Blade is yours? The Green that Blade is mine. I'm the same. I'm a Green Blade Jedi yeah. myself. Well, and, and as you can tell from my logo, it, a lot of people don't know this, but my logo is actually based off a picture I took in my very first saber. The very first saber I built was a green saber, right. and it has a, an emitter plug in it that cool. uh, uses a razor screen as the emitter emitter plug. And I took a picture of the emitter, you know, straight on from the emitter. Well, my logo okay. is based off of that picture that sure. actually shows the front view of the saber. You can see the knobs on it. The green represents the green light and how it 
comes out through the uh, emitter windows and things like that. So my, that's what my logo is. That's so cool. And because of that, my logo is green. That's amazing. Do you, I'm assuming you have a favorite hill. Do you have anyone's favorite hill that you like from the movies or just lightsabers in general? Can I love lightsabers hilt? in general. My favorite hilt like of all time yeah. was Luke's from Return of the Jedi. Oh, yes. Um, just because I think that it, you know, again, the movie was brand new. I saw it in the movie theater. No one knew anything about it when they went to see it. Right. And, you know, as you were discussing with Sarah, when he gets that saber from R2 and he fires it up the first time and it's that green blade Dude. it blows you away but then the, just the fact that the the hilt itself is so reminiscent of it's so Obi-Wan's yeah, saber that you know that there was a strong connection there and a strong tie and Obi-Wan Kenobi is by far my favorite character yeah. in all of Star Wars just um, because of his story arc and oh, you know the ups and downs and his role in this major epic oh absolutely um, so because of that yeah luke's return of the jedi hilt definitely a favorite uh, i've actually i don't build replica hilts myself right i i prefer like to, to have creative. everything to be very one of a kind very original um, there are plenty of other people out there that do replicas i leave them to it absolutely but that being the case, to get a Luke hilt, I had to buy one from a friend of mine. Of course. So, of But course. I do have one. I have it on display. And I actually, I don't have any electronics in it or anything. I just have the hilt that gotcha. I keep on display. That's I've got, um, you know, Larbel sabers? Yeah. Yeah, I have a Qui-Gon Larbel. Oh, nice. It took me nice. like three years to track it down. Yeah. First off, it's so nice to talk to someone who knows what a Larbel saber yeah. is. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, nobody knows, because they made them for like six months, and then you got yeah. to cease and desist. Well, you, you and can't, like, yeah, you can't, be, you can't be in this game without knowing, but, and you have to look at things like that when you make your own decisions when you're in of this course. game. because And that's one another reason why I don't do replicas. I don't right. want to be under the gun. I want my company to be able to grow for without... Sure coming under a lot of scrutiny of course so um to me original originality in this game is definitely the better route on so many different oh, of fronts course. of course you can't you can't trademark a lightsaber right you can trademark a specific one absolutely exactly yeah i've got um i always liked rom codas this is very uh like katana-esque yes I, I i love that i don't know about that little like half a meter thing well Dude, it's just, I love the samurai bit. Like, Qui-Gon's is very yes. simple samurai. Yes. Like, onto that, the Hayabusa. Hayabusa. Beautiful. Um, I tell you what, that was a hell of a challenge, and if I didn't love Robert <laughs> to death, I wouldn't have gone through all the trouble, because it looks terrible. Be before, before I made the dragon head for the Hayabusa saber, yeah. I'd never really sculpted anything in my life. Oh, my God. And this is actually the second sculpt. The first one was just a wreck, and I used the wrong material. And I'm glad I used the wrong material because it didn't look very good to begin with. And right. so when it shattered, I was like, yeah, I can find a better material and do it better. Right. Um, but it was it was fun to do. It was just very time-consuming. And now I know I can do it. So That's insane. Yeah. I, I fail so much at what I do. The fact that number two made it onto the final hill, that's <laughs> insane. Well, you know what? People accuse me of being really good at things. I'm just too just stupid to, to give that, up, actually. you know? Yeah. I, I'm, just, I'm just too stupid to give up. Um, when people come to me with an idea, they say, can you do this? My typical answer is yes, I can do that. Now, I may not have a clue how I'm going to do it. Right. But I, yeah, we'll do it. We'll, That's a good way to be, though. We'll make it happen. You kind of have you know, to be that way. Uh, I've got a long enough wait period at this point to where, you know. <laughs> Can you do it? Yes, eventually. Yes, eventually. <laughs> eventually, yes. So, yeah, I've got lots of time to think about right. it. So, do you. So. so, when somebody comes to you with a saber idea, how does that usually go? They come to you, they obviously have something well, in mind, usually. Well, you know, usually, it, it happens so many different ways. There, sometimes they come to me with sabers that I've already done and say, hey, I really want this saber. Right. To which I have to say, sorry. That's theirs. Yeah. 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 Not not replicating that saber. Which is cool. Everybody gets a one of a kind. Amazing. So what I can do is if, you know, what, what elements do you like from that saber? We can incorporate right. that into your own personal design. Cool. Or they'll want a replica saber, you know, that, for instance, you know, 
young lady contacted me a couple of years ago, wanted a couple of Revan Sabres. Right. Well, I'm not going to make a direct copy of Revan Sabres, but I, you know, I'm definitely going to use heavily inspired ideas and concepts that will make them at least recognizable as Revan Sabres sure. without being direct copies. And I'll do things like that. And then others will send me, others will send me their own sketches which sometimes are horrifying, but I can still muddle through and, and figure out what they're trying to get at. Now, yours was actually good. That, that's almost directly what you drew, so good job. When you get but, uh, artist clients, you're like, oh, thank God. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I've, had some, I've had some pretty rough ones. The, ones. the ones that really get me and the ones that typically end up not getting a commission are the ones that send me pictures of other Sabersmiths' work and say, I want this saber. Well, well, I know a guy who makes those. Right. The guy who you got this picture from. Right. For yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you can go to him. Sure. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to take somebody else's design. I'm not going to steal someone else's design and and make it my own. You know, if someone makes something that has some really cool elements that inspires the customer and they want those similar elements, right. I'll you know play around with it and make it similar but i'm not going to do a direct copy of somebody else's work if that's what they want that's who they need to go with which that's like way respect as an artist too that's really cool that you would have that sort of code if you will you know like that's theirs they don't, sure. i'm not going to do that that's really cool well I, I wouldn't want anyone doing that to me you know if, absolutely if somebody ripped off one of my savers right then you know, I know how that would make me feel. Sure. I know how that would make my customers feel, especially, you know, since they're getting a one-of-a-kind for me, but now somebody's going to mass-produce something that was supposed to be a one-of-a-kind. Right. You it know. takes away the Now, that's story. never happened. No one, uh, there hasn't even been any threat of anything like that happening, but, right. you know, I know how it would make me feel if that happened. Sure. And so I, you know, I, I say we're one big community and we have to for respect sure. each other. I, I dig that. Because that's especially when something becomes a business. It's, that's when people can change. You yeah. know, they, they can have this code and then they will lose it the second they're like, dude, I gotta make money. Yeah. You know, and so that says a lot about like you as a person and you as a company. That's amazing. That's well, I really, really that. cool. Because there's a lot of garbage in this sort of creative thing we do. You know? There is. So that's there is. that's very cool. Well I appreciate that. I I appreciate you letting me play with it. Well, you know. <laughs> What kind of guy would I be if I didn't let another dude play with my saber? I completely agree. Yeah. That's actually how I got you on here. Like, yes. I mean, yes, but I, he's got to bring at least four sabers, and I can yes. touch all of them. Exactly. <laughs> That's so awesome. So what is, what's been the hardest saber for you to make, the most challenging? The most challenging saber... Like, get it away from me when it's done. The most challenging saber, believe it or not, is always the next one. Yeah? Because I'm not 100% sure how it's going to come together. I, I was a draftsman. I did mechanical, technical drawings for several years before I changed careers and started doing something else. Right. Uh, I have an understanding of how these things work. I never do it. <laughs> right. I, I go in every blind build, or every build blind, I, and, you know, just kind of piece it together and make it work as I go, which is, a, I enjoy the challenge of it. It's like, Absolutely. It's like working a puzzle. Uh, but as far as completed builds... The most challenging has to be my daughter Lexi's, the tiny one I talked about. Yeah. Because like I said, this, the hilt, it, the hilt body itself is about six inches long. Right. It's only about a one inch diameter hilt. It's a three quarter inch diameter blade that is removable. It's rechargeable. Of <laughs> it has a sound card speaker. Oh my god. It has, you know, the st same type of switch that the big ones have. Right. Uh, yeah, and all that fits in that s tiny little hilt. So yeah, that was crazy. that was a huge, huge challenge. I mean, it's, right. that was yeah, I can imagine unbearable. <laughs> Taking full side and making an M and M. Oh yeah, mini sized. <laughs> yeah, well the the M and not, not the M and M, but M &M minis. Right. The regular M and M. Right. But the different one, smaller one for your daughter. Right. The smaller one for yeah. my daughter. Yes. Yeah. Not the the, the M and M one wasn't too bad, and actually I, you know, if I've ever been at if I could ever be accused of stealing an idea, it's that one because that is not an original idea. I've seen that done several times. I know Sloth has done it, if you know, done it before. Right. When I saw that a couple of years ago, I was like, "That's really cool." 
and That's a good so idea. I, you know, I just something I've always wanted to do. I would oh, yeah. never do something like that to sell because it's not my original idea. Of course. But yeah, for my granddaughter, I'm all for, I'm all over it. You oh, know. Absolutely. Then if she gets older, just like have this like weird evolving saber collection exactly. of hers. Like I was instead of the marks on the wall, of how tall she got, she just got sabers. I was eight here. <laughs> yeah. I'm Twelve. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, okay, so what goes into building a lightsaber? It starts with concepts. It starts with concepts, and you know, there are so many different ways to build a saber. Right. Because, you know, you can start as simple as a sink tube saber, which is just kind of fit together using sink, sink tube parts. Right. Uh, I, I actually did a show, it's a local show in California called Fandom Workshop. Oh, cool. If you've never looked up, looked up their stuff, check them out. They're on Facebook. They're on uh, they're on YouTube, and they they they're our type of people. Sweet. But I was on their premiere episode. Oh really? And showed them how to put together just a simple sink tube built Sweet. without any electronics. So you can go from something as simple to that as going through like the custom saber shop. Right. Um, custom saber shop has some great modular hilt pieces that you can kind of pick and choose what you want piece them together you can get all of your electronics and you can even get the electronics modular through them as well and oh, just plug and play and put to put your saber together right uh, if you need the switch holes drilled out you know tim over there at the custom saber shop he's more than happy to do all that he does the powder coating so you can you can put yourself you can put a saber together yourself you get all the pieces from him right follow some simple instructions and and build the saber oh, okay what I do is I start with raw aluminum. I have special machining equipment. I have lathe, milling machine, and I machine it all by hand. And, you know, I'm the one turning the dials and moving the tools to cut the metal. Right. I, you know, standing there babysitting the machine. So that's another, you know, way that you can go about creating the hilt bodies. And then, you know, even above that, you have people that do like CNC machines where they build everything in the computer first and then they send it to the CNC and the CNC machine just cuts it all out for you. Right. Which I doubt I will ever get to. I, I don't I don't personally like the idea of that because I'm more hands on. I wanna sure. actually Way I wanna actually personal. put a little bit of myself into the sabers, which I often do because I'm always hurting myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this dragon has tasted blood. Surprise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're welcome. But uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it exactly. crafted his hand. <laughs> it did. But no, there, there's so many different ways. As far as the electronics, there are so many different Saber sound cards out there. Right. Uh, my personal favorites are from Plector Labs. Okay. I primarily use the Nano Biscotti sound card because it gives the it gives the performance that I want in a very small package that requires very little battery power. It, it only yeah, requires. That's it requires less than five volts. I can use one, a single 18650 battery, which is a 3.7 volt battery, and a sound card that's only three quarters of an inch wide and about an inch long oh, nice. to run the entire Sabre. So that allows me to create a lot of space inside right. the hilt body. Um, my higher end Sabres that have the crystal chambers have a complete chassis system that's all one solid piece that works without the hilt body on it. That's cool. So to be able to do things like that, you really need to save space on the electronics. Of course. Um, that's why I was thrilled when Irv over at Plector Labs came up with the Prism sound card. The Prism sound card is a higher end sound card that allows even like color mixing. It has the blaster deflect and the and the lockup sounds and all that. All right. So and it has uh, auxiliary pads for different lighting effects and things like that like if you want accent leds right so it's a higher end sound card but it still only runs off that single 18650 battery oh wow and it's not a huge sound card it's just under an inch wide and it's about i think about inch and three quarters long so it's you know significantly bigger than the nano biscotti but it's still you know is workable yeah, especially especially since i only have to use the one battery so i've actually added that to my prices as well um, so I'm very thrilled about those. There are, there are plenty of other sound cards on the market. Of course. Other companies that make them. You go with what you like. You know, you, sure. you go with what you're comfortable with. 
and what your expertise level is at that point. Right. Um, most Sabersmiths use a single high-powered LED in the hilt, right. not unlike the LEDs that are used in like high-intensity flashlights. Right. They're the same basic type of LED, and they're little modules that you can put in the emitter or in the blade holder that'll shine the light up the blade tube. Uh, wire that in with the switch, a battery, sound card, and you know, maybe a recharge port if you want a recharge port, right. and you have yourself a saber. That's pretty cool. Your sabers are like the brightest sabers ever. Why is that? Well, I've, I've stolen some really good ideas from a lot of really brilliant people. I dig it. Um, you know, I've gone out and researched, and like I said, when I started, I had no idea what I was doing. Right. So to me, LED string blades made sense. Oh yeah, of course. Okay. My blades use five millimeter LEDs, and I use a bunch of them. Yeah. Uh, my my blades, just a standard length blade, uses anywhere from 120 to 130 LEDs Whoa. in the blade tube. Good lord. And they are strung together with five layers of protection for the string, so that you don't have to worry about the the Breaking black spots and all and, that. Right. You know, a lot of people are leery of the LED string blade because of the Hasbro blades. Yeah, exactly. But those blades were mounted on a wafer board with foil contacts. Oh, well then, And yeah. they had nothing to pad them inside the tube. So yeah, one good smack on those and yeah. you're gonna break your contact and lose an LED. Mine are LEDs that are soldered together. They have a solid wire soldered down each side for extra protection and to give it more conductivity. Right. That whole thing is put into a clear heat shrink tube and shrunk down to fit tight around the LED string. Then it's wrapped in a diffusing foam that fits snugly inside a polycarbonate blade tube. It's not breaking. That's amazing. Yeah, so you, yeah you, you have to really wail on it super hard to, to damage wow. the string. I mean, harder than you would probably hit right. your saber yeah. against anything, sure. especially one that you pay that kind of money for. For sure, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be running over that with your car. Right. That's nuts. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I love them. And you have, I call them day blades, if you call them. Uh, I call them day blades. Yeah. I, the cut, and I get my I get my blades from the custom saber shop, my blade tubes. Sweet. And they do have red, green, and blue day blades. Right. And I use I still use the diffuser in them and all that. Of course. And it's not the only way that I can do it. As a matter of fact, I've just recently started using the day blades in the past six months. Oh, nice. So nice. since I think my sons was one of the first that actually used the red day blade. Gotcha. I like the day blades personally because when we're out at a convention and we're outside or we're in really bright direct sunlight yep. you're not going to see it lit up so you know there's a big difference between seeing your saber with this white tube on it or a saber that actually represents the color of your Absolutely. blade so that's why i like it but another reason i like it is it really makes the color of the leds more vibrant right so a green string in a green tube is going to be a very vibrant green Right. The red is phenomenal because you have this really intense red blade at the core with this dark red edge of the right. blade. It just it just looks crazy. But then on top of that, you can also do color mixing. So I can put, uh, for instance, with one of Sarah's, I put a white LED string inside a red tube that creates an orange blade with a red edge. Uh, you can also do some other color mixing like with the green tube and the blue LED string to give you kind of more of a, a yeah, I, I suck at colors, turquoise or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that one color. Yeah, the yeah. one that's between green the and blue. The one that's not both of them right. together. More blue than green. Not that red. One. Definitely right. not, not red. red. <laughs> uh, if you want a not red, this is how you get it. Right, exactly. <laughs> but I, I still use the uh, white polycarbonate tubes as well. Right. Uh, they will carry the light all the way out to the edge and so it's just one big bright blade right and the blades you know i would love the way my blades look i you know i'm i'm not too proud to say that right. but not just in person but on camera oh for they sure. look great uh the only time you're going to wash out one of these blades is if you've got just a really professional type flash or, you know like uh, right. for instance 
uh, Sarah and Robert went and saw Carrie Fisher and had their picture taken today. And you could barely tell their blade that their sabers were on oh, right. because they use those really intense Super professional flashes. flashes. But you can still tell that the blades are on. You can still see uh, the color. Go. Even through so, it. <laughs> uh, that flash. Yeah, that, that, that made me feel good inside. Yeah, right. that I could, oh, yep, it's on. I can tell. <laughs> Going to add that to the list. It yeah. Also, semi works in professional flash. Semi. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know how well using the word semi anything right, will work yeah. in advertising. Kind of. Kind of. Sort of. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. How often are you in front of a professional flash? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a lot? Then look at our day blades. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. I, um, I I love the LED string because it has that actual lightsaber look and feel. Right. Like it's coming out as opposed to, like you said, like a flashlight click on and click off. No, I've, I've got to, I got to tell you, yep. there's a couple different ways that you can string those. And some people yep. do actually string them to where they do scroll Right. From the bottom to the tip. Right, like okay. I don't make mine that way. Sort of things. Okay. Right. I do not make mine that way. That takes a lot of extra wiring, yeah, I get and that. it throws all the voltages off. So I run all of mine in parallel because I can run that directly off the Nano Biscotti sound card. Smart. And I don't uh, for the for the green, blues, and whites, violets. I don't even have to run a resistor in my blades. The only ones I have to run resistors in are the yellows and the reds. Yeah. So I don't do that, but because of the way that the sound card works, it gradually increases the voltage going to the blade as it powers up and then does the opposite when it powers down. So yeah. it makes for a very realistic power right. up and power down instead of way. this kind of, of an, sectional scroll sectional yeah, that yeah. goes up, it, it actually fades in and out very which realistically. Which It looks the same, but cooler. Right. It's got that sort of like, I mean... It, it's called an emitter, but it's got that sort of like emission sort of. Exactly. Tweet. I dig exactly. it, man. It's cool. Oh, I keep I I keep talking to you, but I keep looking at them. Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. It really is. Have you done a purple? Oh yeah. How do you get the right purple? Because I've seen a lot of sabers. Yours looks really good. And I've seen some like it, purples are hard one. It's luck of the draw. Yeah. And it's a little bit of Jedi mind trick. I believe that. 100%. Okay. Because I have had people say, I want a purple blade. Right. So, well, I don't do a true purple. I do a violet blade. Right. Of course. And the specific LEDs that I use, uh, matter of fact, Sarah has one. They're, one I've seen this before. Yeah. They're, you know, it, it's a violet blade. Right. Uh, somebody else says, I want a pink blade. I'm using the same exact LEDs. Oh, right. Okay. Because it's... Here's the thing with purple. Purple is a deep, kind of a darkish color. Yes. It's difficult to get a true purple color and still maintain a very bright blade. Uh, because right. as you brighten purple, what happens? It lightens. It lightens right. to more of a light violet or a pinkish okay. color. You get into the fuchsia area. Let's exactly. add some weird color names. <laughs> hey, Cerulean. That was my I've, favorite crayon. Cerulean? It's a type of blue. It's really nice. Right. Yeah, I, a nice, you lost nice me. I'm, I'm, like I said, bad at colors. That's why I use the same LEDs for violet and pink. I know Cerulean. So. <laughs> Cerulean. Seems like a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that's cool. No, I never thought about that. As far as like, you know, it's just one of those things that you don't think about. Right. That, yeah, yeah, as it gets darker, you brightness, it's brightness, right. it, the color Now, lights. what I have done, I've actually found... I've actually found diffuser tubes that go inside the blade tubes. Really? That are colored. The ones oh, that I okay. the ones I standard use are white. So okay. there's a white tube inside here. Uh, but what I, I've actually made a blade that has the violet LED string. Okay. And it's inside a white blade tube. Actually, it's a clear blade tube that I scuffed. Okay. But then the diffuser that I use on it is a purple. It's a true purple diffuser. Oh, sweet. So it has a little bit of a deeper look to it without knocking out too much of the light because yeah, the, the color spec the spectrum is so similar that it doesn't filter out too much of the light and it's still nice and bright, but it, it does deepen it to a little bit to where it is more of a purplish hue. Gotcha. So, okay. You always wanted that because that's, like, that's the color. Everyone's like... How do you do this correctly? And you've done it correctly. Right. So that's really, really well, cool. Well, we have some plans 
Sarah had mentioned Chase when you spoke to her, right. who's a good friend of mine, but he was a customer of mine first. Okay. And then he became basically one of my strongest advocates. You know, Sarah wouldn't have found me yet and I've been for Chase. Other right. many other people wouldn't have found me if not for Chase. He he has one of the biggest fanboy moments <laughs> in his unboxing video of anyone ever. <laughs> and so, you know, throughout the you know, we've communicated over the past couple of years because he was one of my very first customers sure. and he has become a good friend. But on top of that, he's also become my blade master and my research and development tech. So he helps nice. me with research and development specifically on the blade technologies. Oh, okay. And we've got some things in the work that are going to just blow the top off of... Uh, off of the whole Sabre game, I, you know, I'm real excited about it. He's made some great strides, and I'm pretty excited about what's coming down the road. And I'm not going to give up any spoilers on that, <laughs> so that, don't I'm ask. I'm getting really excited so for the don't next ask. question but that yeah. I can't ask. Something, <laughs> just look for some pretty awesome things in the, in the future, very near future. Have you ever done a curved tilt? Yes, I have. What were the complications of that? Uh, what was, was, was there anything more difficult about a curved or a straight one? The, the difficult thing is again getting things to fit because I have a straight battery uh, right. and I have a straight uh, sound card and you know all these other elements that are straight right. and not curved and so getting them to fit is, is the biggest challenge uh, it depends on how you do it my wife has a curved hilt saber but hers is oh, nice. her saber is has a curved section in the in the foregrip area okay. so it's not just a gradual curve over the whole hilt body okay. it's straight with the curve and then straight again oh okay gotcha uh, I have built curved hilt sabers that have the gradual curve right. towards the rear hilt and again you know it, it really comes down to just getting the electronics to fit in it properly sure because I am starting with round two and I use a tube bender to right. put the curve into it. Oh, so you, you know, straight up make them curved. I make them curved, yes. <laughs> You're not even like, we're going to start with the curved case. Well, it's, it's, no, no, no. Yeah. We make the curved case. We make That's them curved because, you know, I want to be able to control how much it's... Sure. How much it's bent, how much of a curve it has, and how that oh, all comes so cool. together. That is so, I love Dooku's saber. Uh, I do, too. It's so, like crazy different it is and it's sort of it's got that weird kind it's of straight got, part then the nub right it's got the, the little palm. curve around the rear hilt but then it's also got a little angle in the pommel that yes. where the pommel bends off of it so yeah it's very unique very different and he's so like and being one of the best saber masters ever you're like he's got a badass hilt like, right what? i love hilts i yes do you remember did you ever I see do a, too. right <laughs> There's these things called lightsaber belts. You should really look into it. I think you'll like I, it. <laughs> I'm going to Google that as soon as I get home. You should. <laughs> you might end up in a weird place, but you'll I come might. Back. <laughs> I might. Could happen. Do you, did you ever see that... Um, I never watched the show, but it was the, the MTV Jedi. You ever heard about that guy? No. They did this show in like the 90s. It was called like True Life, I'm Embarrassed of My Parents or something like that. And there was a guy who was a Jedi who like walked into airports, forced open the doors, which I still do. Because, I mean, we all do. It's reflexes, you know, right. Jedi, you you're on to. Earth, it doesn't change it, it's still there. How's the door gonna open if you don't use the force? Exactly, everyone else should be thankful that we're around. Right. <laughs> but he did, he'd go to the airport in his full Jedi tunic traveling and his kids, like some emo kid, like, oh, I hate my dad. And he had a website, he's all, my name's Kinchar Bannon, it's my Jedi name, you know? Nice. And. He had the sync tube stuff, so I was just like, right. that's awesome. Yellow box is like, go to Home Depot, make a lightsaber. I was like, that's awesome. Yep. And I, I remember having, um, I remember just being obsessed with hilts. I love the difference, how each one's different. Obi-Wan's mm -hmm. got that like spike ball in episode one. Yes. And then it switches in three. You're like, all right, well, he loses it here, then slight difference here. Or Anakin from episode two to three. Right. Drastically different. Drastically. You know? it's, it's so cool, the progression of Luke. Using yes. Anakin Saber from 3 and then having one reminiscent of Ben's. Right. Just the idea was always amazing. Yes. I, I love that. It's all personal to you. Qui-Gon was very simple. His lightsaber simple. Yes. It was elaborate swordsman. This is weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was very, very cool. Totally forgot where I was going with that. I have no idea. It. You get it. I get it. it. Yeah? I get it. Sabres. I, I read you. Sabres. Sabres. Cool. Kylo Ren's. When it first came on, how'd you feel? I was fine with it. Yeah? Because, you know, everyone associates, uh, especially since the prequels, 
they associate saber battle with flourishes and, and right. spins and things like that. So a lot of people lost their minds with this cross guard idea because, well, how are you going to spin that? Well, right. who says he has to? True. Okay. Very true. Uh, you know, when I, when I first saw it, I thought he is going to be bashing the hell well, yeah. out of a lot of people with that thing. <laughs> He's just going to lock and then just push. Yeah. <laughs> just, so, yeah, it, it, it never even occurred to me when I first saw it that there would be any controversy over it until right. people started bringing things up. And I'm like, you know, in the real world, we've been using swords with big ass cross guards for a long damn time. Saves fingers. Yeah. <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, and then they can be used as an offensive part of the weapon as well, which, for sure. you know, if, if it's plasma that. Right. The cross guard's made up even more so, right? And his is all like a jet turbine. It's all janky right. and weird. And, and who knows? You know, a lot of people think, okay, well, you know, it's an unstable saber, so these are vents. or You know, there's all a right. lot of different ideas out there oh, yeah. about why it is the way it is. Because it's it, it sounds different. It does. It has a different sound. You it know does. lightsaber sounds. I it do know sounds lightsaber different. sounds. Uh, we use a lot of different lightsaber yeah. sounds when we build them. I've, I'm with you. I remember I got, a, I got a lightsaber. I have like one with sound. And I turned on, I was like, that is Luke episode six, and I want an episode one Obi-Wan. It's like, right. that's like, and Darth Vader's is different than everyone's. Yes, it is. You know, I love that. I love yep. talking lightsabers. I never get to talk, nobody <laughs> knows this stuff. You know what I mean? Boxes versus buttons. Like, dude. Exactly. Dude. Boxes get in the way. Yep. Says the guy with two boxes on his personal right? saber. <laughs> yeah. It's a tribute saber. Well, and, like? and actually, I use it. I, I duel with it. I do, I, get, I spin with it, but I set the boxes up in such a way as you can see right so it, it fits. fits my hand <laughs> whereas Luke's <laughs> well Luke's is farther back he's got the, that, those, it's huge it's big it, it is it's big but you know if you're primarily battling with a one hand you're going to be holding the it's way up towards the top you're going to be holding the right. saber closer to the emitter anyway so that box isn't really going to get in the way right but yeah with mine I I don't know I just thought it would look cool you're okay that's a right. lie what really happened here <laughs> <laughs> the is truth behind I it. wanted these really deep grooves. Okay. And I know that people listening to the podcast are mesmerized by this yeah. because they have no idea what I'm talking there about. Are, there are deep grooves in the lightsaber. There are deep I'll grooves. I'll walk you through it. Yes. Okay. Uh, so to do that, the inside diameter has to be smaller. Right. So I can't fit both the battery and the sound card in the ah, rear grip. Okay. So I had to I had to put the sound card somewhere else. Okay. So I had to move it up here. Ah, okay. Well, I wanted to be able to have access to it. Sure. So I built a control box with a panel that I can slide off, and my sound card's right there. <laughs> this is what I want, and we're going to move some stuff to make it happen. Yeah. That's well, awesome. that, that's, that's just how that's I do how it things. That's how it works. Yeah. That's so cool. What's funny is when I build a saber for myself or for my family, I can knock them out in a couple days, three oh, days right. tops. You know, my signs I built in, like, maybe four days, and that's an that intricate piece. That is crazy. Um, this one that I built for my wife, I only did the hilt because we have a ripper blade that that Gary Ripper made specifically for my wife, which, thank you, Gary. Right. <laughs> uh, but the, the hilt I made in two days, and it has a complete chassis with crystal chamber, oh the whole nine God. yards, and I was able to put it together in a couple days. I can do that because when I start, I don't have to worry about what the end product's going to really look like. I can All make right. it look however I want. Gotcha. When I started building my Sun Saber... It, right. I didn't have a concept of all this battle damage and stuff to expose the crystal chamber. That just kind of came to me as an after afterthought. Wow. So things like that, it allows me to build faster. When I build sabers for customers, it takes about a week and a half, two weeks to get one put together from start to finish. A week and a half. Yeah. You know what I get done in a week and a half? Literally nothing. <laughs> I'm working like six months on a lemon head. Still a lemon head. A lemon head out of foam. It's not hard. It's I'm the just nipple, that bad. It? It's the nipple, man. It's always the nipple. Always. It gets in the way. It gets in the way all the well, time. Well, let's not, let's not talk crazy now. <laughs> I mean, you know, bananas are square for all of you listeners. Ben, bananas bananas are, square are square. And lemons are way more nipple-esque. Yes. It raises an interesting question if you grow bananas in a inside a box. Would they grow square? I know other fruits will. You can do that to watermelons. Would a banana work like that? Oh, I will raise your question one more. Is a tomato a fruit or a vegetable? Are we talking botanically or culinary? How do you feel right now? 
I can go both ways. Botanically, it's a fruit. Culinarily, it's a vegetable. Yeah? Yes. True statement. That's confusing. What makes a fruit a fruit? Is it seeds? I've heard people say seeds. But what cucumbers makes, have seeds. Right. And a cucumber is a fruit. It's a berry. What? Just like, yes. Cucumber, Wait, cucumbers are berries? Yes. Mine's a bean. No way. <laughs> yes. Uh, any, any... Let's break it down. Any turns into culinary talk Why are we talking about this? And right. why do I know it? Right? <laughs> Let's get to the real wish. All here. right. <laughs> so whenever you have a basically a seed pod that is surrounded by fleshy edible materials, okay. it's a fruit. I.e. tomato. Tomato, cucumber, pumpkins. Pumpkins are fruit? Berries. Berries? Yes. So what's the difference between a berry and a fruit? Uh, the way they grow, usually on vines. Uh. And the way that the seeds are held inside the fruit. Interesting. Yes. You just settled so much stuff that's been yeah. going on in my head for years. Really, really the only true vegetables are like leafy greens, roots. Yeah? And, well, potatoes are considered roots, but starches, things like that, carrots huh. that grow underground. And avocado is a fruit. Avocado is a fruit. It oh, is a... That was a guess. It is, <laughs> yes, because you have the fleshy edible substance surrounding the seed. Gosh. It happens to grow on a tree. Huh. So it's not a bear. Now, how do you know this? I have no idea. <laughs> I, uh, I was building a lightsaber one day and was like, hmm, culinary I, versus botanical. You know, I don't sleep much, and I spend a lot I'm of time you on there. YouTube, and you run out of yet things. You know, you can only watch so much PewDiePie before you want to blow your brains right? out. Right. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I've always liked to learn. I like That's understanding things. I've, I've always loved cooking. I, I love culinary oh, cool. arts so yeah it was just it's not that big of a leap to sense. understand you know hey there's people some people say tomatoes are a fruit some people say they're a vegetable <laughs> you're like, what's I, the real deal in the morning i'm gonna find out <laughs> and i did and now your podcast has gone to shit as a result <laughs> hey no my podcast learned something they never learn something <laughs> especially with my name on it it's horrible Here and knowing we, yeah. is half the battle uh, ha, ha. oh the more you know <laughs> anyway, 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 you learn. In, any other fruit and vegetable related questions that you may have? Well, actually, now that you mention it, oh lord, <laughs> avocado is not a berry. Avocado is a fruit. It is fruit. Tomatoes a berry. Tomatoes fruit. a berry. Fruit. Which one? <laughs> Tastes better, avocados, but only yeah. if you're from California. Ah, uh, that's fair. Yeah. Actually, that reminds me. You live in California. I do. You're in Florida. Yes, I am. Why are you uh, my, in Florida? My, my family lives here. My mom, my sisters, my brother, my daughter, my granddaughter, they all live here in the Tampa Bay area. Are you from here? I, we're not, none of us are from here. We're from Kentucky. Nobody's uh, from Florida. None of my family's from Florida. Me neither. Um, here's a little background on yeah. what brings a Kentucky family to Florida. Yeah. First, my... One of my sister's husband got a job in Florida, okay. moved down, actually down towards um, the southern, southeastern part of Florida. That's where I live. And so they were down there for a while. Then my other sister, her husband, got transferred to the Tampa Bay area with his job. So nice. he took over the regional area, right. got transferred. <laughs> we got this. Got this. Uh, in the meantime, my other sister, her husband, uh, the company went under something. He got laid off. They had to go back to Kentucky. Gotcha. Um, then he eventually found another job back in Florida here in the Tampa area. You can't escape once you're here. You can't escape <laughs> once you're here. Um, then I got a, I, as part of my job, I had to... Uh, go to a specific area, but I was originally going to come to Tampa after I finished this short-term job that I was uh, doing in, you know, overseas. Right. So, in the meantime, my brother met some girl online, happened to be from the Tampa area, so nice. he came down to Florida to meet her and never left. Right. <laughs> my parents, under the prospect of all their kids and grandkids now living in Florida, sold the house in Kentucky, moved down to Florida. I never got the job done in Florida. My job ended up taking me to Missouri. Oh, so man. now I get to visit Florida and not live here. Hey, and that's pretty great. From Missouri, I went on to California. Which, what part of California? 
Uh, Northern California, just north of Sacramento. Okay. Uh, a town called Yuba City is where we live, but we're real close to Sacramento. You know, it's a 40-minute drive oh, down to great. down there. Uh, some great Comic Cons and stuff down there. Wizard World has a really good one every oh, year. Man. Um, I know Wizard World so bad. Yeah, Wizard World is great. Uh, they they seem so much more organized than a lot of other conventions. <laughs> yeah, for real. They're just they're really nice. I uh, I've been to San Francisco, San Diego, and Los Angeles. Nice. I have not been to Sacramento. Uh, you know, if, if if a convention takes you to Sacramento, go for it. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking for anything else there, eh. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those. <laughs> now, I will say, living there, living in that area is awesome because I can drive two hours and go skiing, snow skiing. Oh man! Up in Tahoe. All right. I could drive an hour and a half, a little less. And be in wine country and sit and drink wine all day. I can drive, you know, 40 minutes to be down in Sacramento, you know, bigger city, you know, nightlife yeah, type stuff, whatever. I can drive another couple of hours and be in the Redwood Forest, uh, I, you know, indoor itself. Matter of fact, our, our Rebel Legion base is indoor base because for that right. reason. Oh, yeah. Because we're Northern California. Are you in the Rebel Legion? I am. Oh, we're going to get on that in a second. Go yes. On. Uh, so yeah, I, you know, I can drive another, you know, two and a half hours max and be in San Francisco and, you know, with all it has to offer. So I can go. You've got the Bushman. Yeah. He's there. I, I can, I can do so much, even though the area right there where I live, there's, it's just a normal town. Just, you know. Centrally I, located. Yeah. <laughs> it's centrally located. So think of it kind of like Plant City, you know. Right. You're, you're in Plants. You're in Plant City. There's not a whole lot there. In Plant City, there's enough to where you can, you know, go shopping, survive, live, get sure. everything you need. But you can come to Tampa. You can go to Clearwater. You can go to Orlando. You can go to all these other fantastic right. places from a centrally located position. And that's kind of where I live that's up in Northern awesome. California. So, yeah, it is pretty awesome. What part of Kentucky are you from? Uh, Northwestern Kentucky, a town yeah. called Owensboro. I've never yeah. heard of it. It, it's and most people haven't, but it's actually like the third biggest city in Kentucky, which isn't really that saying a whole lot. <laughs> but it, it's it's pretty big, you know, fairly not a big city. I think when I left right. there, it was like sixty six thousand people that lived there. Nice. But you know, my my graduating class had more than fifty people in it, so you know that. Hey, there you, you go. Know, we're like three hundred, three hundred. I dig graduates. Kentucky. Almost everyone I've met from Kentucky is super cool. I guess because you all like country Well, people. I hate to bust that for you tonight. Uh, right, yeah. <laughs> Except for this lightsaber. Except for this one guy. <laughs> he just makes lightsabers. Yeah. <laughs> He's from Kentucky. Yeah. We don't know what lightsabers are in Kentucky. <laughs> right. I'm from North Carolina. We don't enunciate. I've learned it, but yeah, it's a well, whole lot and, of... <laughs> and you, you may have caught some of my Kentucky accent coming out just because I am here with family right now. Oh, I, oh. But for the, for the I most... go home? Yeah. It's all done. over. Done. I, Done. Even now, I need like a translator sometimes. You have to drink over there? Yeah. Okay, sure. you know it is. I ain't got time to enunciate. Right. <laughs> you do when you're on a podcast losers. sometimes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you're in a Rebel Legion. Yes, I am. So am I. Outstanding. Dude, I love the Rebel Legion. Brother. It's the best. It is the best. What do you have? Do you have Jedi? I have just standard Jedi, my own character. Sweet. Uh, Kanan Sharif Yeet. Sweet? That's um, awesome. Yeah. Uh, he, he wields this bad boy right here it's so cool and uh yeah just the the costume has evolved over time uh it's been great especially with my wife making costumes as a business uh, now dude. when i need upgrades you guys are the house we are the dude. house if i live in california uh, she's a lot faster than i am she can me. she can throw together a tunic set in an afternoon i mean she is what? yeah oh. she's she's got it down to a science that's amazing. And then, uh, yeah, the belts, the belts that she makes are just phenomenal. You Definitely are, uh, check that out. Your Jedi Temple, Skywalker Temple, or is it the Sun uh, Sunrider? California has two Jedi temples. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in the Jedi Temple. I'm just purely Rebel Legion. Gotcha. Yeah, I honestly, I barely have time for Rebel Legion. I don't. Yeah. I, I've been chomping at the bit to to join the. Um, the Golden Gate Knights. I'm good oh, friends with yeah. a lot of those guys. Uh, That's cool. Yeah, they. I hang out with them at pretty much every con and all that, and love spending time with them. I just don't have time to go to any of the practice right. sessions or any of that stuff. This 
yeah, the build's consuming. Yeah, right. Oh, when, when, man. when I'm able to let go of the full-time gig that I do during the day and, and do the Sabres full-time, then, yeah, that's going to free us up to do a lot. Sure. Uh, the three of us are definitely going to get involved with the Golden Gate Knights. That's amazing. Um, Robert, so he can teach us what we're doing, and Sarah, because she needs it. And she needs help. She we're just going to say have it you seen her? Have you seen her flurries? <laughs> We love you though. And we thought Danica was bad. Oh. Danica doesn't listen to this. And oh. if she does, whoops. Wow. Danica, you're awesome. Wow. That's cool though, yeah. <laughs> I, that was, it's sort of a loaded question because yes. um, uh, I love the Revolution of yes. I love it. It's like basically dead in Florida. <laughs> Uh, there's a bunch of people that are dual members. They have 501st and Rebel Legion. Right. They'll always shoot 501st. Yeah. So it's not as active or as like um, structurally run, if that makes sense. Like right. the 501st is way more. They got their stuff. Yeah. Rebel Legion's kind of like, hey, do the thing. Yeah, I'm like the, the dude, like I got the Rebel flag, you know? Right. And um, I'm trying to collect a patch from every Jedi Temple in the Legion. Well, I can, I can definitely. Let me know. I bought uh, yeah. like 20 of the Skywalker Shoot, shoot me a message on Facebook or send me an email or something. Because, um, yeah, I, I, even though I'm not a member, I know all those guys. Let me know. Yeah. I buy, I've buy. i learned the, the patch trading game. you got to buy one for yourself, and then you have to buy a bunch to trade. Because people, they won't sell you. Like, I've right. got four, but what do you have to trade? Right. Damn it, I just started. So exactly. I bought, they did a run of Skywalker Temple. I bought like 10 of them. Yeah. Like, I don't even need this, bud. Trading all over the world. It's cool. Yeah, let me, let me know. I can hook you up. Sweet. I know people. Yeah. I'm right. not the people, but I know people. You're the lightsaber people. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's so awesome. Dude. We are at 58 minutes and a half. Nice. Right up to an hour. That is amazing. Right? What I tell you? It's not that bad. No, it's not. It's cool. And we're talking lightsabers. I mean, yeah, I, I go well, a while and be like, how'd you make this piece? And how yeah. about this piece? Well, I mean... Right. All, all it takes is one visit to my YouTube channel to know that I can talk about sabers sure. for days. So, dude, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, let's. This next hour is all about the Hayabusa saber. <laughs> <laughs> Does the dragon have a name? Hayabusa. Yeah, Hayabusa. Yes. That's awesome. Well, where can people find you? They so can find me primarily on Facebook for now. Okay. Um, that's that's my main hub. Okay. So it's facebook.com slash Hamptons Handcrafted Lightsabers. And I just blew that. Hamptons Handcrafted Lightsabers. <laughs> Are you from Kentucky? I okay. am. I know, right? It, it comes out. <laughs> so Hamptons Handcrafted Lightsabers. That's all one word blended together. Pretty easy to find on Facebook. And if you're not on Facebook, you can contact me via email at hamptonsabers at gmail.com. So those are the two primary ways to start a commission. Cool. Now, as far as other places that I have a presence, I'm on Twitter. Under the uh, name HHCLS, Sweet. so Hamptons Handcrafted Lightsabers just abbreviated Smart. HHCLS. That's a it's, lot it's, of letters if it wasn't right. It's, it's easier. That's all your 140 um, characters. This is just exactly. your handle. Uh, same thing with YouTube. Uh, my YouTube channel is also HHCLS. Cool. So pretty easy to pretty easy to find there. I do have a Twitter account. It's not very active right now. Um, right. You know, I, I I don't get Twitter. Twitter's hard. I was drunk the other night and I used Twitter. Yeah, I. <laughs> I shouldn't have. Yeah, but I, I used it. I, I don't get it. I I try, but I really haven't seen much from it. So, yeah, the big ones: Instagram. Yeah. HACLS, YouTube, HACLS, and then the the big hub is the Facebook page. Facebook. Yeah. Facebook's the best. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. I had fun. It was right? great. All right. I didn't yeah. Enjoy it. Sweet man. I guess that is it. Awesome. Boop. And may the force be with you.